two amazing days together. Wow, it's been fantastic. It, it's a wonderful event at a wonderful venue. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Business Network Live second digital special. My name is Hazel Varaki, and I'm Head of Salon Groups at Weller Professionals for UK and Ireland. And talking of UK and Ireland, we're really, really excited today because we have got our Home Nations edition for you. Um, we have got representation on our panel from um, opinions and influencers all across our industry, including Scotland, Ireland, Wales and England. So what we want to do for you today is really showcase the future. We know we've been through a really tough time and we're still feeling that now, but let's really start to think about what's going to come in January, February, March 2021, which we're all looking forward to seeing the back of 2020. Um, and what we want to deliver for you today is just some great ideas, some inspiration and some solid sound business advice. And if you all leave with at least one idea that you could maybe think about exploring or looking at implementing into your business, then we've done our jobs. So it's not about me today, I'm going to crack on and I'm going to introduce our panel for you today because uh, it is a really great one. Um, I'm going to start off with introducing Lara and Dom from the beautiful Lara Johnson Lifestyle Salon in the Mumbles in Wales. Hello Lara and Dom. Hey Hi. guys, you're Hi. okay. Hi. Hey, how are you? Um, you guys are celebrating 25 years of business, I think, and we, we know that you've built an amazing business. It's all about your team for you guys, and we all know that unless you've got a strong team, you haven't really got anything. So we're really excited to hear your opinions today um, Yeah, and hear from you. Thank you. Fabulous. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. So we've got another power couple, and I don't know how you guys do it. We've got another um, married couple who are joining us now who run a salon business. <laughs> I mean, me and my husband can't decide what to watch on Netflix together without have a dom having a domestic. So um, it's amazing what you guys are doing. And the next two are Sophie and Liam, and they are from Wonderland in West Lothian in Scotland. Hi, Liam and Sophie. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining us. We know that you guys have been boasting about being two-time nominated Scottish Hairdresser of the Year. We know we always see you at Trend Vision every year. You always get involved. Um, and we're really, really pleased to have a Scottish Scottish perspective. God, that's a bit of a mouthful. A Scottish perspective on things. I will get it out eventually. So thank you for coming today and joining us. Can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. Thirdly, we've got the very distinguished Mr. Patrick Gilday from Patrick Gilday Hairdressing in Donegal. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Hazel. How are you? Hi, guys. I'm good. I can't get my words out today, but I'll get there eventually. The quicker we can hand over to you guys, the better, you know. Um, so Pat's had his business in Ireland for 33 years, I think. A big, long 33 years. It seems such a short time, really, but uh, it's an amazing length of time. It's been a fantastic journey. Time goes fast in this industry, right? And we know, Patrick, you're a little bit of an icon in Ireland and you've built your business very much around that amazing experience, that five-star experience, which you drive through your team. So we're really excited to hear from you today as well. Lovely, thank you. And then finally, who I would call probably one of the most formidable women I have met in this industry, it is the wonderful Jackie Lang. She, hi Jackie. Hi everybody, oh, I'm not quite sure I'm ever gonna live up to that table. Thank you. So she is the driving force behind the 145 salon um, chain Supercuts and Regis, which I'm sure you've all heard from, um, heard of. And we're really excited to hear from Jackie today because what Jackie doesn't know isn't worth probably knowing. So we'll crack on and see um, what she's got to share today. No pressure. No pressure on you, Jackie, at all. No pressure. So we want to get straight into it, guys. We've got so many questions. I think we had questions left over from the last Business Network Live uh, digital that we did. And we've got 52 new questions that came in. So for all of you watching, thank you for giving up your time. You can imagine we won't get through all of them in the next 50 odd minutes, but we will try and get to as many as we can and they're super, super relevant ones for everybody. So Jackie, I'm going to come straight to you. Um, and I really want to talk about the fact that December's probably going to be like no other December we've had before, right? It's going to be super busy. We need to look after our teams, but at the same time, we need to keep them motivated and we need to make sure that they're staying on task so that they're 
driving that agenda of getting people back in in January, February as well. So how do we balance looking after them and keeping them motivated and delivering what we need them to deliver so that we can get the money in the till so we can still be open next year? Wow. And um, yes, they're in line. <laughs> they're in line. It's a million dollar question. Um, in terms of, I think that we have two, we have three pillars in, in, our, in our business. Of course, we have our team, our customers, and then we have the commercial um, aspect of our business. You know, any one of those falls down, you don't have a business. But I think right now it is more prevalent than ever to be able to speak to our teams and our team, and then our teams to understand that they are, them and their safety and their future is very much at the forefront of everything that we do. It's more important than, than ever. I can imagine when you've just got one salon or you've got you know, a couple of salons, it's easier to get around and really have that personal connection. A bit more difficult with a thousand, which is why we've got to make sure that we <coughs> almost over embellish to our managers to make sure that our teams get the idea that we're in this together. It's about collaboration. So if I take the fact that we've got salons, our salons didn't get any bigger over the pandemic. So it means that we've got to socially distance. We've got to make sure our team have the correct PPE, have the right protocols in place, that then our clients feel as though when they come into the salon, they feel safe. That's important. Because I think 30% of our database has still not been back mm. because they are concerned. Yeah. So it is about us getting that message out through teams, through our social media platform, that it is safe to come in. And their safety is, at the, um, is our priority. And then secondly, it is about connecting with the team and making the most for them. So how do we make sure that you have the same um, revenue. So you have the same salary this year versus last. Lots of things have changed. So get into that granular level is, you know, how many cut and blow dries do you have in? This is all like teaching you guys how to suck eggs. But Tevis's confidence has been blown. They had three and a half months off and then they were crazy. Then business tailed off. Then we were locked down again. I think it's about, you know, talking to our hairdressers, making sure that they we get with them and partner on what their goals are. And then our goals will be aligned because I don't think anybody comes into work to do a bad job. I don't think anybody does. But it is about a connection. What motivates you? How can I help you? How can I make sure that I remove any roadblocks? And I think, you know, straight one-to-ones, breakfast meetings, just so that everybody feels included. Would you say the same, Lauren, Dom? Yes, most definitely. I think on a year when we've all struggled with so many different areas, the key thing for us has been to communicate throughout with the team. And um, I think that is absolutely imperative at this moment in time. Looking ahead and looking at our incredibly busy month ahead that we've all got uh, in December is making sure fundamentally that the team feels supported, that they feel safe working in the environment. And also the key thing is some of these clients, um, as Jackie said, we had a 25% uh, situation where clients have not returned. So for a lot of people, their visit now to the salon has been their only contact to come out for six, eight, 10 weeks. So whilst they're in the salon, making their experience absolutely beautiful, we always say our mantra is about creating beautiful hair for our clients. But whilst they're in there, they're having a beautiful service. And it's a little bit of going back to re-educating our team and our clients because we've all got into a pattern. Our clients were very educated into coming five to seven weeks for their haircuts. All our team automatically, it was, that's what they did. Every client would leave with a rebooking service. So whilst we are looking at that and supporting the clients and the team, it's whilst they are rebooking in January, giving them something to look forward to. So it's giving them a better service in as much as added on value service. So we're encouraging about our loyalty yeah. points. And I, I think Jackie, what you've just said as well, which has played key for us is your al alignment of goals. 
yeah. at, at the end of the day, we've got a new role now as yeah. well as hairdressers, like Lara's just said, that people are coming to us that haven't seen someone for three months. Some of them, you know, it, it's we can be there to provide an extra service. And the other thing, it's it's which we found the easiest way to communicate this with the team to motivate the team is really with education, uh, working alongside Weller, working alongside our existing educational programs within the salon, yeah. and really just pushing pushing the want for us and our team to be better. And if I could just add, I 100% agree with everything that you've said. It's about creating a vision with with the with your clients, isn't it? It's just yeah. not this yeah. service. Yeah. It's about what the next two or three or four are going to look like so that there is a need and a want for them to return because they're coming to family. It's not just having their hair done. They come for their experience. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Trying to keep that on the agenda with them, 100%. Um, so we just said about the scary fact, you know, Jackie, you, you said you're seeing, it's great for you to be so honest that 30% of clients not coming back, Lara and Dom, 25% of clients not coming back. Let's talk about stylists, you know, with a lot of us talking about mobile growing, freelance growing. Are you guys concerned, because we got the questions in, about hairdressers choosing to leave the industry after what will be a killer December for them, you know? It's going to be, it's going to be really, really tough on them. Do you think that, that we are going to see that and what are you guys doing to prevent that because i know that you both in your businesses you you work an employed model what, what, what are you doing jackie can we start with you yeah um i think i think we've got to have to recognize that the first lockdown a lot of people started to rethink their lives and if you think of purposes having smaller children historically it's been the no-no of not having a saturday off that was our busiest day and what we went out to do is to say, right, okay, we want to create an environment for you so that you can be flexible around your home life. So if, if the five days that you were working normally Tuesday to Saturday and your Saturday was business, how do we help you educate so therefore we spread the business over the seven days or the six days however you're open? And, those, and we found that historically 26% of our business was probably done Friday, between Friday and Saturday. That, since the pandemic, has split. Our Mondays are much busier. Our Tuesdays are much busier. Sunday has been getting busier for a while, but we're seeing much more of a spread over the seven days, which then allows us to be able to encourage our team to say, what do we need? Of course, we've got to keep our doors open. You know, let's be realistic, we're in business. But how do we keep our, our stylists who are very productive, great employees how do we be flexible with them so we both win mm. so how having that you? flexibility yeah, yeah and talking about it because i think our industry might have been a bit later than some of the big corporations who've yeah. been talking flexible working for a long time we've always been a little bit cagey and scared yeah. about it i don't know what it's like for you lauren dom have you been talking about okay how can we make this work for you mums carers who are also hairdressers mm. i think Actually, when we manage our team, because not like Jackie, we've got the one salon, our team, 95% of our team have been with us since they've left school. So they only wow. know in their workforce, literally, they know Lara Johnson lifestyle. And whilst um, I was only in the second year of the business, when I actually had my first child, I went on to have three. Um, I think we've counted up the tall tally of babies that have been born in the salon and over the years it's been where I think we're up to like definitely in the 40s but I think honestly we've had that lifestyle flexibility for a long time and I think that's what encouraged our team to actually stay with us um, you know we have a real loyal team and we recognize it's all about the lifestyle a long time ago so it's been very important because the reflection now on looking at the work-life balance is massively important um, a lot of our uh, team who have children don't work Saturdays anymore um, and, and I think if you've got a strong column which uh, and a, a continual clientele who will follow you they're equally happy to come in on a Monday with that stylist as a Saturday. So it's also allowed flexibility within the working team so that we aren't all crammed in at the end of the week of Friday or Saturday. As um, Jackie said, we've always had a very strong day on a Monday, actually, um, particularly around our area. For some reason, a lot of the salons still close on a Monday, whereas we've always done a six day a week 
um, op opportunity for clients to come. And again, Mondays, Tuesdays are a really strong day now. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, you're 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 maximising the days you're open, which we've seen a lot of. And then it gives more flexibility to your team, right? You've got more different hours on different days to offer them. So that's fantastic. Um, something I'd like to talk to Sophie and Liam about is we just talked again about the scary numbers of uh, the declining clients that we're seeing. Like average bill seems to be up and we're doing quite quite a good job with that. But we are seeing less clients on a daily basis. So one of the questions that came in were, um, that how are you making a difference to your service and ideas of making it very personable? So yes, they're a bit paying a bit more, but actually they're feeling that value. Like how are you guys doing that? Because I know you've got some, some really great ways. Um, yeah, I mean, we... Well, we've kind of evolved our salons. We moved from a smaller salon into a large salon, just as the business grow naturally, really. And we, each time we've had to, we've kind of looked and re-looked at our business plan and the relationship with clients and retail and things like that. We kind of changed the focus on retailing clients. Um, and we changed that from educating the stylists to just skipping that and just educating the, the client um, using social media, we also have a, we have a, a, a sheet, you sit down, it's kind of like a, we try to create kind of like a restaurant kind of atmosphere, but in a novelty sense, not in like a high end sense. Um, and they have a sheet and the sheet will have on it a complimentary services, um, complimentary fees that we change every six weeks, we'll have a speciality. Also within the relationship between the client and the sheet, there's bespoke additions on that sheet. So that would be bespoke additions in like treatments or, you know, a service that we want to sell. And we just basically let the client lead that conversation to the stylist. So the client will lead the conversation. You know, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I've seen this. This is new. You know, and they get excited about it. Do you know what I mean? It's something that there's no selling that at all. You know, and, you know, it's one of those things. You're, as a business owner, you're selling the product to the client rather than it being putting pressure on the stylist to do that. And I think now when we're trying to fit, like, you know, like we were saying, we're putting all these extra things into the service, you know, we are there as contact, but also, you know, the hygiene element of the kind of before and after, it's hard to then add more pressure to be kind of retailing for the staff. I think that's going to drop really. So it's just finding the mechanism that works really. And we found, you know, just changing that focus from educating the stylist to educating the client, you know? I think that's always worked for us as well because everybody loves having like a little tick sheet and there being free things on there that kind of give you like extra added value. Um, but also it's it's a bit easier to kind of tick and like add things onto your service as well. Um, and clients expect it now. So they, yeah, they add on all the time. Yeah, they I will. love it because it's the consistency, right? Every client's going to see that new service, that Wellaplex you're doing or the new Colour Fresh Mask service, whatever it is, because they get presented with it. And I love how it calls out all the, the complimentary stuff that, you know what, we all take we all take for granted, don't we, with certain businesses. We get things free and we just take it for granted. So it's nice that you guys are, are listing that and also taking a little bit of pressure away from the stylist. We know they don't always remember to do everything and time is so key now in salon, you know, getting your, your client done in that time and ready for cleaning and everything. Pat, what, what would you... What work, sorry, what works with that? Well, we add theatre to it. So we've yeah. got steamers within the salon. We've got, you know, we make a right. the theatre around it. So clients still be like, oh, what's she having? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they'll look on the sheet and be like, oh, that's that one. Yeah. I think the thing is that holds a stylist accountable as well. So every single person has a, a level that they have to kind of work to, like standard yeah. size, because it can't be forgotten about. Like it's yeah. there, it's happening for everybody. So They've it's got that prompt. Really, yeah, tailored and um, yeah. Now, Patrick, talk to us about a, a personable experience in Salon, because I know you have some really strong views on this, and it is one of your USPs, right? Yeah, without doubt. You know, um, just listening to some of the wonderful ideas there and some of the stuff that's coming across. And again, with the consultation card, to us, it's invaluable for a number of reasons. Number one is for our stylists, because our stylists are very powerful people, very, very creative and wonderful. But as hairdressers, sometimes we can lose what we want to deliver, just in that busy salon environment. So the consultation card within the salon for the guests, what it's actually doing is it's reminding us as a hairdresser, you know, have I asked you everything that I need to ask you? Have I missed anything? And it takes it right through from the cut to the color to the treatment and then your home hair care. 
And primarily what we found the most valuable thing that's been introduced in the last number of years, which actually directed us towards a consultation camp, was the energy code coming from Weller. Oh, yeah. What actually happened is it changed, in my opinion, the whole mindset of the hairdresser because it made it easy rather than a sell. It was personalized energy code and that opened the door for the journey of the whole consultation. So it's making that support basis for the stylist as well as a guest at all times. Support the stylist and the guest is automatically supported. So the consultation is fantastic. Within the salon, moving away, we're all good hairdressers. So we do it and we all love what we do. So we have to move ourselves outside the box. Moving ourselves outside the box is that experience. Everything that we do and the way we do it, it's got to be special. And today, you know, where we're at now in this current climate, 2021, okay. All we have to do is think about, is this a way I open the door? How can I do it better? Is this a way I move the seat? Is this the way I clean the hairline? All those simple things. So it's just changing our train of thought. And I think of what I would like anybody to take away from today is, Focus on your experience and your experience will keep your guests. Yeah, 100%. And um, we keep getting the question about, you know, my, my stylist aren't selling retail, but I think you've kind of answered it there a little bit. Like if you help your stylist, they, they will do it anyway. So do you want to talk to us a little bit about your, I'm not going to ask you to quote what they are because I've seen them, but the, the amazing retail rates that you're seeing, Patrick, and you're still seeing clients by retail now, right? And treatment. Yeah, the photos, does. But... It took us, this didn't just happen with us when we opened our door. This has taken a lot of years of developing and focus, trying things that don't work and trying and trying to move away from the usual mantra of uh, sell, sell, sell. So part of the consultation that we find in the salon is without doubt that we have a system that must be followed, is we just find it unacceptable that if you haven't recommended an energy code to your guest, you haven't placed it in front of them, so that they can see it throughout their whole journey throughout the day when they're sitting in the chair. And we've even taken it a step further. We've created our own energy code boxes. Because again, what we found is, and again, well, I worked with, uh, with us on this and it created something beautiful. So what happened is we were bringing along the products, placing them in front of our guests. And sometimes they were just getting a little bit lost in the mirror and the mix of everything else. So we created the box of where we placed the products in. It's there for their whole journey and they're visualizing on it, and we find they pick it up, they talk about it. So it's that we TV screen for them. Yeah. With the consultation then moving through is what we do is we follow that right through up to reception. We take their consultation box, we bring it to our front of house, and we say, Mary, Francis, this is your products that we use today. Do you require this for home? This is what we recommend. There is nothing about selling. If we catch anybody selling in the sound, we say, Sorry, excuse me, Kimia. Recommend, recommend, recommend. Yeah. Very, very simple. And it's the old mantra, and sometimes the retail thing where we go, oh, let's talk about retail, but let's be honest about retail. Because it worked for us. We were at 5%, we aim for 7 We were at 7 we aim for 9 And it continued on, and our average is about 20%. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. That is good. Everybody can do it. Everyone, yeah, and I know that's what, what you truly believe. And we did work with you to create those um, system professional boxes, and they're working really well with you when the client's in salon. But obviously, yeah. our clients haven't been in salon. So do you want to talk to us a little bit about, because I know click and collect was a new thing for you. Jackie, I think you've been doing it for quite a long time. Pat, you know, what was that like starting click and collect and home delivery? Um, is that the, uh, are you going to continue with that? Well, we're going to continue with it. What we did in the initial first lockdown, Again, we were all running in the headlights, what can we do? And we were pulling and plucking at different ideas. So uh, I talked to uh, Cormac, our my Elson guy, and one of our contacts, and we kind of bounced a few things over the telephone about making that connection. So we came up with the refresh, because we were all thought we were just closed for that short window. And we wanted to give people, we were just so scared about people going and reaching off the shelf, and there was people that were due in. So we wanted to give them something professional from the professional hairdresser that was a bit more personal to them. And that really took off. We did it as a package. We did a refresh with your energy code, which means that it came as a package. And that took off fantastic for a period of time until we got a wee bit further down the road. People love the idea. You know, we know that refresh is very mild and it's very gentle and it will only run so far. 
But the power that we learned from that was you engage, you connected with us, and you gave us a solution. It didn't work for everybody, but it worked for a percentage of our clients. And even for the people that it didn't attach to, they were actually delighted that we kept that engagement going. So I was really, really happy with that. With the click and collect, it was a learning curve. It led us to uh, upgrade. We developed our website as well, where we could purchase online the products. That was a different angle for us. Uh, and what it took us then to the click and collect. It worked really well, and we were quite pleased from it. Let's be honest, the core was our business. It's hairdressers, and mm -hmm. it's been selling. But again, the power of keeping that connection and offering people that service is invaluable. Mm -hmm. uh, it worked, and we will keep it going. So that was where we were at with that there. It was a learning curve. Yeah, I think it was a steep learning curve. Like you said, it was a bit scrambling around going, right, what have we got? Colour Fresh, Colour Fresh. We can give that to our clients with a system fresh or shampoo. And it's just so crazy, isn't it? We've seen our clients, the least we've seen them in any calendar year. Yet we've bought them, so, we've known some of them so much better than we've ever known them. I know Sophie and Liam, you feel the same with this. Like, you know your clients and they've got a new invested you know, interest in, in seeing you guys do well because you're such an important service to them. Do you want to talk about a little bit? Because you started doing your home deliveries, didn't you? And how that worked for you? Yeah, we, um, we did it. We didn't, I mean, obviously, there's kind of profitability to it as well. But it I was, think it was fairly much what Patrick said, though. Just kind of like, oh, what can we do? Like, there was definitely an element of that. Yeah, um, yeah we, just, we just wanted to keep contact, you know. You know, like you're saying, there's... Um, you know, they're saying there's a lot of people not coming back to the salon. And we was very aware of that. We was very aware. So we wanted to have contacts. We personally went to live locally. Um, we had conversations on doorsteps and that. You know, we did we did sell it as a milkman drop, but they, they kind of they was waiting for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they, they, wanted to, they wanted to have a chat. And we found that kind of... It totally was not the point. <laughs> no, it wasn't the point. But there, there, is, there was this kind of, you know support you know there was the genuine care genuine care asking how you do it and then and, and the genuine support you know and we found that was invaluable so that was more than uh, more than the profitability of the products basically yeah do you mm -hmm. know what I mean and we've seen you know we've we've not experienced the numbers of the people not coming back we've been pretty full on since we, we returned you know and I wouldn't attribute it all to that but we very much just kept a contact really you know Absolutely. Um, Jackie, have you got anything to add on click and collect? Like, what's the value to your business of it and finding other ways to remotely sell to customers? Yeah, well, I think that we lost the ability to click and collect um, when we when we were locked down. We were utilising it to offer that service. And it wasn't just to sell retail. It was about getting new clients that would not normally come to us to, to have a haircut or a colour so that we could use the opportunity that they're coming in salon to collect their product that they bought online. And our job was, how do we convert them? How do yeah. we entice them to be able to have a service with us? So that was the number one priority there. But what I would, what I, what we've been seeing is, as you know, we have a mixture of large um, inner city locations, large mall locations, and then we have some in you know, smaller cities and then villages. I have very much seen that our village, more local salons, have not felt the impact of COVID as much as the city centres. Yeah. Because we were reliant on that footfall. You know, people were back in work, where many of them are working from home. People were going to shops to shop, and we relied on that footfall. But Sophie and Liam, absolutely right. I think our more local salons, they had the opportunity to be able to connect with their clients in a way that the larger salons that had that more transient approach didn't. So there's very much been winners in this, in this return to work. And so for us, our challenge is, what do we do with those inner city locations to make us, to, to help people to feel more comfortable coming in? Because that's not where the life is. You know, we talk about that um, work-life balance. You know, most office workers are gonna have that work-life balance. So that ecosystem, that you know, in 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 the cities has got to rethink their business model and where amongst them. Yeah, this absolutely. Is what we're doing. 
Yeah. And I think rethinking your business model, you need to know where your business is at as well, right? You need to know your figures. You need to know every element of your business. And I think all of you pay for salons. So, you know, there's not a salon, many salons now that don't embrace some sort of run some with some salon software system. I'm just wondering if you guys can talk to us a little bit about, especially like maybe starting with you, Laura and Dom, about what are you doing with your salon software system? Are you using it in a different way today to try and find new opportunities or see new trends that you can act on? Yeah, absolutely. It's, I think what we've always found with, uh, we, we've been compute, at a computer system in the salon now for, for 20 years. Um, I think the way that we use it is we use it as a way to support our hairdressing or business acumen. Uh, we don't, we, we don't, what we don't want to do is rely on it. But what I found over the last few months or last year really, is that we've We've changed the way we look at it. We're, we're driving now to keep a client by using the information that we have and not just find a new client. It's about like, I like just now what Sophie and Liam just said about how going to the doorstep, it's retaining the client. I found that's what's so important and that's where a computer is so important. So the specific areas we've really looked at, um, we've looked at where people have fallen out of habit of having a five to seven week booking. Mm-hmm. And you quite often, what we have found when we looked at that five to seven week booking is that usually they might have gone to a box on the shelf or started doing their home colors or started using different products. So we then know to target that. Um, mm-hmm. the, the other thing that we do again, like for Jackie, as Jackie's just said, We're in a great position for us, really, that we are a community salon. Um, We have 26 team members, but we're still very much community based. So we've used a computer system really to confirm who hasn't been in so we can contact them. So we can pop around, we can phone them. We tend to phone Mm -hmm. and just check in with them rather than send an email or a text. We, we, it's a bit more personal for us as a business and, and more doable for us as a business as well. But with the actual running of the business where it's been absolutely incredible is that we literally every time we go to bed and every time we wake up there's something else to deal with there's someone's aunt's mother's guinea pig has got it and we can't come in and then someone you know someone's kid's been sent home from school in the morning and it's just this constant kind of change awareness so we've divided our time more now uh lara and my work life experience is very important to us with the family but what we've done we've separated ourselves with working shifts so we're on opposites but it's um lara in particular it, she she has it on her all the time i have it on my phone if someone phones we can rearrange columns we can contact clients mm-hmm. but the thing is we can do it ourselves mm-hmm. you know we've got the facility as the business owners to get hold yeah. of people and and it Keep just it personal really yes, very much so shows yeah. we care to them yeah. of course we do care so yes the computer computer system is invaluable it's we i don't think we could have um managed this that's been thrown at us as jackie said the beginner who would have ever thought this would happen i don't know if i could have or we could have managed this if we didn't have all of that information at our fingertips Mm. yeah yeah for sure absolutely um liam and sophie have you got anything to add on on that point like is there anything that you're using more and it's helping you get the business to bounce back i suppose the way we can you know talk about kind of the difference of when we came back and because we totally changed the way we worked um, so that was would affect profit margins so uh, analytics to being able to go into the computer to the productivity look at our allowance to see what we can drop to um and, you know it, in a way we've we've had to kind of uh, in a way just work around with the margins so it's just get, gathering that information we, we use it very much the same way as Lara and Dom you know we, we work yeah. alternatives and you know have that having on your phone and, be able to yeah. you know adjust things like you've got to go on and it doesn't really matter where you're at and yeah also the analytics but I think also like the text messaging system and stuff like that and um, being able to contact clients in that way for online booking links and yeah like putting passwords onto things and allowing certain clients to be able to you know clients that have been affected by like lockdowns and things we're actually still in lockdown until the 11th um, yeah so yeah being able to kind of contact in that way i think has been yeah it's, it's a different thing for us all together so we, not a way we do one of the more. one of the a good tip or we we did this when we was kind of the first lockdown so we're going to with it this one is that we 
put the online book in behind the password uh, on our website. And then basically we sent that password out to the clients um, that basically, well, it's three weeks. So then three weeks worth of clients. And it means that we're not doing the admin of bringing each and every one of them clients yeah, it's, and it's letting them there. letting them find, book and find the point. So we've just opened up availability. Um, so, I mean, it works in that way. They work hand in hand, really, you know? And yeah, we've, we've cut our appointments by 70%. So it means, you know, the simple sum is that I've got 30% increase in the price. So, yeah. it's just, you know, it's as simple as that, really, you know? And that's just balanced it out. So, and it has, it has balanced the, the revenue. So, it, no, it doesn't work. You had your fingers crossed at first, but it's, it is working. It's working. Yeah. Good so. to hear. Did I hear that right? Did I hear that right? 30% increase? Yeah. Wow. And we're worth it. We are absolutely worth it. But, but we've, 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 we've time increased time. as well, though. Yeah. So they're getting more. So, and that's how we explained it. You know, we explained it as in, you know, we're, you know, from a 45 minute appointment, you're having an hour appointment. Yeah. You know? And, and we're, we're not um, overlapping clients so we don't have anyone in between we just either. work with one client um, we've added on so, and, for color development and stuff that has to be paid for you have to pay for it and it's yeah. so much there and it is and it is we have you know when we we was aware that we'll lose clients yeah. but like i said we there's not as many appointments so that margin of lost clients we've mirrored with the available appointment really you know um and it works and the staff um they enjoy working that way um, they're, they're, they're doing much more social media, they're doing much more Instagram, which again, you know, it's a newer client. Um, we've had a lot of attraction from new clients because they're doing the social media aspects, you know? So it, 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 it has worked. But like I said, we had our fingers crossed, and, you know, our heart and our hands really just kind of I like... I'm just wondering whether the stylist and like, the team would adapt to it, but it was a discussion that we had had with them. We talked about different options when we came back from lockdown, like how would be better to work and everybody agreed on this and everybody has enjoyed it a lot more than I think we maybe thought we would whilst wearing masks and visors and everything as well. So you got the team's buy-in which is is good it always helps right if you're trying to implement something new. Oh, um, so again talking about like what's the trends and the data within your your businesses and what does it look like now versus pre-COVID Um we talked about it a little bit on the last um panel that we did but the question came up again about younger clients and we're still not seeing the younger clients coming back in um, or coming in less regularly um, we're all worried we keep hearing about 20 30 percent of salons not opening in January where are those clients going to go and how are you guys because we had a little bit from Tash from Hobb on how she's doing it but how are, are you guys if I can talk um, to you Jackie about how you getting them back in and enticing them back in is it through new services that appeal to them or what are, what are you doing? It is definitely around new, 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 new services, new quicker, more express services. They've got to dip the toe in the water because, you know, very often, as, you know, they get to university, they're, they're all doing each other's hair via YouTube, how to do it on YouTube. It is about, and that's why we're so, we're so excited about the Colour Fresh Mask, because I think that is an entry service into, for us to be able to get those newer clients in. They have their hair cut, uh, the visitation is longer 12, 18 weeks because they all have long hair. And then, dare I say, the dreaded ombre, you know, they didn't have to come back to the song. So it's about those interim service, face phone, social media, like everybody's doing. But it's all about being a bit relatable as well because are you having younger stylists cut younger stylists' hair? Or are they going to the mall? Um, you know, how do, the, how do the stylists look? Would they entice that 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 younger customer to come in? I think that's the difficulty. Yeah, and Pat, I know that you did a campaign a while ago, didn't you, about really looking at the whole generation of the family yeah. coming in, because you know they're your future. Those ten-year-olds, you know, girls that are coming to with their mum, that's the future of your business. Yeah, we started the campaign there about two years ago, and it was working on the energy of uh, we have the guests in the salon, so it does. Their kids, and the key indicator for us was hearing that, other kid, that their kids were going somewhere else to have their hair done. So that took us into a whole discussion within the team, kids having their hair done somewhere else, younger people, what they're doing with their hair. So we worked on a program, and we, we called it a six-step journey. And it was your child up to two years of age gets a free haircut. Uh, you have events in Ireland like Holy Communions and Christmas. 
they get their hair done free of charge. They get a massive discount in certain days of the week, up to 50% of the command. But the important thing is what we are seeing transitioning. Some of those guys have now moved to become students. They're working part-time and they're coming into the salon. So I think part of a salon journey is to utilize our guests, which is there. If they have family, get them to bring them in. It may seem as if it's cautionary, but it's actually not because you have your stylists who are starting out. They're doing the work, which is complimentary or at well discounted, and they are also developing a clientele base as well. So there's a three-prong approach, and it's been working really successful because you are strategically developing your future clients, but also you're giving something back, and parents love it, especially young mothers uh, who have young daughters who are getting it tighter, getting the kids their cut, and they love the aspect of the family day out, the mother, the two kids. So that worked for us, working on that. They're going to continue working on that, I guess, in 2021 as well. Lauren, Dom, are you, what are you doing with the younger clients? Are you finding, like, is that what you're seeing, that demographic isn't coming back or okay for you? Yeah, we, we've had a turnaround in this area and it's massively down to, we've um, actually, it's our daughter now, She's <laughs> we've employed her to be our social media Instagram person who has completely changed um, the whole Site into how we were operating that that area. Um, Simon De Felice from from Wella um, invited Tilly onto one of the courses then just to give a support on how we target what areas, how we go about it, and we've seen a massive change in so many young people coming into the salon now, which has just been brilliant. Right. I think we've got we've got the old team. Like I said, they've come to us since they've um, left school, so we've got the the, the, mum, the older team now who are still looking after our older generation but the young the youngsters are targeted by our younger elements of the team we have a very uh, clear situation we do before and afters of our own clients it's always against the backdrop we have a brilliant light and we are seeing now that um, people are coming to our salon bringing our photos in not something from Pinterest or something that they downloaded from another it's actually our work they are recognizing this before and after and it's just been fabulous to watch actually mm. and it, it's appreciative you know and we've got this thing with the with the team now that if um, they do in a before and after especially with our colors and well, I like one of their own colors personally, they get a big high five and it's that recognition. So there's a real new energy and buzz. And this has literally only happened since we've gone back um, since, you know, um, lockdown. So I, I really, we've been encouraged by it most definitely. Yeah, I mean, social media is such an important part of, of brand marketing. Yeah. You know, and, and but the, the, the great thing with social media is it's accessible to all of us with, with fairly inexpensive equipment, just with the right know-how and that important message of don't try and look like you're showing off. As long as you yeah. get that balance right, then it, it works. But we, the other thing we've done as well is we've also gone a little bit old school. We've got um, three children, uh, 17, 20 and 22. And their social life changed very much so. They, they started go into to coffee shops they started they still have access to be able to go even though in wales at the moment is for four people and again remembering we're very much local community so in fact an idea that came from our daughter who's working with us she set up a scheme we're not into discounts so we off balanced the discount that we offered with a slight rise in prices just drifted in over time but then really just targeted with very accessible and quick voucher systems that would encourage people to come to the salon. So just credit card sized little vouchers. These were made like uh, Mumbles Community Coffee and Cut. Mm. So you would, we can't serve refreshments. We, we don't have them in the salon. So you get your refreshment from a local business and then you get 10% off of a certain service that we want you to have off. So for example, we look towards uh, the color fresh masks and, yeah. and really pushing new products to introduce them to the young market but it gave us an opportunity to go of course some of the vouchers would creep in with other people um we 
we're caught a little bit on the hop with this one with how quickly things move we we yeah. put in sort of october and november we then lost a couple of weeks in that but it's just about being flexible and marketing where yeah. you can see the younger age groups going and where they're drifting yeah. I love that. And I love collaborating with another local business for the benefit of both of you, right? Absolutely. I think yeah. it's really created a whole uh, community. And what we were doing through, again, going back to lockdown, but in a real positive way, we did lockdown stories. Uh, I know we had a huge increase in people watching. We would do uh, work with a bridal boutique and we would do before and afters and hair stories with them. That was hugely appreciated. And also, um, we all did the TikTok pass a brush. Dear God, I didn't even know what TikTok <laughs> was. Next minute, I'm dropping a brush on Dom's head and he's throwing a brush back at me. But we had something like 10,000 views on this. Yeah. And it's all hitting a completely young target audience. And so, again, it's learning. It's learning from the babies and, and bringing all these ideas in. So... We've had a really good turnaround, actually. Real buzz, new energy, and I think the team are really loving it. Oh, fab. It's really good to hear you embracing all of that stuff because it was a bit of fun, wasn't it? But if we can turn that into a business tool to attract a new yeah, area of clients we're not tapping into, then then why not? And it's what that appeals to them as well. Um, Jackie, anything on social media for you that you've been doing that's been really important and you'll continue into 2021? Yeah, I think the before and after can get the look. But I agree. I think I think I don't know if it was Laura or, or um, uh, Sophie that said when their team see that well or like it or the other hairdressers like it, it improves their confidence yeah. um, to be able to do more and more and more. And definitely in terms of that call to action, when yeah. you're having a look to get the look, we're seeing real movement in a drive through a click through to make to, to book an online appointment. Yeah. And I love that you've said about the call to action. We talk that a lot at, at Weller. We get a lot of sounds saying, just we want to do this, we want to do that. Just make sure you've got that call to action and a way to track it so that you know whatever you're doing on social media is driving somebody into your salon. You're getting an appointment out of that or a new client. So I think I love Jackie. I know that's what you're all about. You're about tracking, tracking, tracking. Sophie and Liam, anything social media wise for you guys? Tips? The only thing that I would add in terms of like what the guys have talked about, because I think they've kind of pretty much covered everything, but I do think that that is the way that younger people shop now. Like they wouldn't necessarily go onto a website, but they will follow you on Instagram. Um, the way that we run ours is rather than younger generation going to younger stylists, it's more that everybody kind of has their, their key things that they do. So like, um, for example, our stylist Kelly, she does loads of like scalp them. Um, so that like platinum white color, like that is what clients will come to her for. And they find her through Instagram and they will come in and specifically request her for that service. They will go to Kirsty for face cream, balayage. They'll go to Eva for coppers, um, the gents work and stuff like that. So everybody's kind of got like their thing that thing. they focus on. Yeah, their thing. Um, and I think that particularly like young people, that is, way that they kind of find their way into the salon so just making sure that we've got the online booking link and everything like um you know on on the instagram page and on the facebook page um i would definitely say like facebook we've got slightly older like our older clientele are on facebook and then maybe slightly younger via instagram um definitely they're two completely different things so I'm getting some questions coming in here. So I'm just having a little look through them. Pat, have you got anything to add for social media? Who looks after yours? We uh, tend to have uh, three or four in the shop that are active on it because we want to come in three or four fronts. One is, is we want to keep it simple. We want to keep our message very clear and simple. And we try not to be too professional with it because we want it to connect with our database. And sometimes... Social media, sometimes if you try too hard and it's over polished, you can push people away. Mm -hmm. So we want them to embrace it. So our Facebook is a geometric market and then Instagram is working and we tend to keep a mixture where we involve fashion. You might throw in a bit of Alexander McQueen, a lovely shot or a wee piece of art. You bring in your hair elements as well. Uh, so there's a whole mixture and combination. But what we're finding now is we set a target about 12 months, 16 months ago for the team. Uh, developing their own Instagram and stuff. And that's been powerful. So they're running with it. They're taking their own pictures and everybody has their own show within the show. So it's working really good. Keep it simple. 
So you split it across the team, which is quite nice because then you get a yeah. different take from each person who's doing almost like a mini takeover. It sounds like you let each different person have a takeover of it every now and again, which is, exactly. which is fab. It gives them ownership of it as well, doesn't it? And um, one quick question, Dom and Lara, um, people are trying to find your Instagram. So I need to ask you what your handle is on Instagram um, because they, can, they can't find the you. Man in the back is at Lara Johnson Lifestyle. There we go. Um, right, we're about, I told you it'd go quickly and we've only got a few more minutes left. So what I'd like to do is just do a quick round robin before we do our diamonds of the day and get kind of your top focus maybe for 2021 of what you're going to focus on to take our businesses through. So let's start with Jackie. Jackie, just one thing. I know it's really difficult. What would you say to everyone watching to focus on in 2021? The vision of the um, the lifetime of the guest in terms of it's not just one service, it's how many visit, visits in the next year that we're going to plan out, not to eke as much money out of them. It's about you know, their lifestyle, their needs to make sure that we are supplying their needs and they stay with us and don't go and look for somebody else. Right. Good one for retaining your clients. Lara and Don? Um, do you know what? I, I'm going to enjoy it. I, Enjoy I it. missed it. I really <laughs> missed it. When, when we been were in performance, I, yeah. it, for me, I mean, we've been doing this a little while now, haven't we? We're getting yeah. on a little bit, but it was, uh, it really made me realize how much I enjoy it. And obviously, if we enjoy it, hopefully our team will enjoy it as well. And hopefully, and, you know, hopefully our clients will too. Just so. have that passion for our industry and just look after every client that comes in uh, and really give them the experience that they've missed. And that what we are all absolutely best at, making beautiful hair in a beautiful environment. We are, we are happy as a team. The clients go out happy as a team as well. It's, in, it's infectious, isn't it? 100%. Pat, that takes me nicely to you because I think that's similar. So we're going to have to look for something different now from you. <laughs> oh, no problem at all. Give me a uh, big shout out to Michael Glover there as well, just before I finish up. Uh, <laughs> Tell me. That's Patrick's account manager for everyone who's asking. <laughs> Tell me, uh, listen, it's very, very simple. We've got to be happy. Let's get through this together. There's two things that I'm going to take from it. There's one just touching on what we touched today. Number one is with our rebookings, not, not their next rebooking, their next three. That's what we're working on. Let's get the customer back to the journey of rebooking. The one that has stretched too far from six to eight and from eight to 10 weeks. So we're going to rebook them for their next three appointments, bring them into their six week cycle. And then what we're looking to do is get them used to that regular interval back to the salon. Yeah. Your vision for 2021 has to be so important. It has to involve the team and you have to sit down and do it as a salon. Let the start be positive. Out of all of this, there is going to come lots of good things for the industry and lots of good things for us all. So I am very focused. I want this 2021 to grow, develop, but not just with my point of view, with everybody so that's my first port of call in the new year and let's all be happy we'll get through it thank you pat always so positive i love that as well get them in for the next three appointments love that sophie liam over to you guys yeah i mean we uh, we wanted to do a big focus on well we've got that team and we just wanted to do a big focus on that it was meant to be this year but um <laughs> i think really we're going to put it off to next year so just be a bit more kind of um, seen in the industry, but a lot more platform work, um, and try and bring a, um, a few new things to the industry as well, um, from an eye direction point of view. But yeah, it's just we've missed it, and we just like, well, you know, like Bob says, kind of most, yeah, right? we just want to, you know, we enjoy doing it, it's something we love doing, and yeah, we're just looking forward to be, you know, to be, be let loose, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, and having the time to do that. I mean, look, we've got the British Hairdressing Awards tonight, one of the biggest yeah. nights in our industry, you know. Good luck but, to everybody. That's yeah, yeah, good, good luck to everyone. Good to all the finalists for that tonight. 100%. And I just think, you know, this year hasn't been a time about, you know, platforming yourselves and things, but let's really hope that in 2021 we can do that to celebrate all the amazing talent that we have in our industry. And Please, everybody, join in tonight, British Hairdressing Awards. Yeah, it's going to be tough for those people that win. They don't, they're not in that room, so we need to send them all the love, DM them, WhatsApp them, and say congratulations because it's tougher than ever to really platform yourself at the moment. It hasn't felt like a priority, so good, good on them. Um, and hopefully we'll see all of you guys in those things, in all those events next year as well. Um, 
really, really grateful to everybody who's tuned in today. I think we had over 100 participants. Jackie, Lara, Dom, Pat, um, Liam and Sophie, thank you so much for your time. Um, we're just going to go through our diamonds of the day now. I think they're going to come up in a moment. Um, if somebody's behind the scenes getting them up for me, there they are. Excellent. So um, I hope everyone's enjoyed it. These are our diamonds of the day. Communication is key. Absolutely. With your team and your clients. I think we've all talked about, about that today. Focus on the client experience and that will support your salon and team. You know, we, we didn't talk about e-com today and things, but we've, that is something that the e-com players will never be able to um, provide for our customers. You know, the treatments, being service-based, going into a salon, enjoying yourself, connecting with your hairdresser again. So let's make sure we focus on that in 2021 and giving the best experience possible so that they come back and they want to come back. Um, and that leads nicely into retaining your clients. It's just as important as gaining new ones. And if you get that client experience right, you'll tick both those boxes, right? You'll keep what you've got and you will gain new through recommendation, um, what you're sharing on your social media, for example. And then collaborating with local businesses. Yeah, I really, really loved that one. That was such a nice one that you guys came up with. There's this big focus, isn't there, around shop local. We've got loads of assets at the moment that you guys can share on your social media to encourage your clients to really think about their local community. And the hairdresser is such an important part of that. The hair salon is such an important part of that. So don't be afraid to really make sure that you talk your clients, talk your clients about shopping local and supporting local business on your social media and everywhere. Um, I think that's everything now. So thank you so much, guys. Um, you can catch up on all of this on our Weller YouTube channel, um, or if you want to share it with your friends. Um, and we'd just like to wish you all the best December. Go and lie in a dark room and meditate um, so that you're ready for what is going to happen when December comes around. Um, and please all stay safe and just know that Weller are here to support you guys um, with our teams and all of the support that we have online. Um, take care, guys, and we'll see you next time.